Hello folks, welcome to Legacy IAS. In today's video, we'll be looking into the Kelji dynasty political. So we're talking about, okay, your Delhi Sultanate. Okay, in Delhi Sultanate, first we have discussed about your slave or Mamluk dynasty. All right, pretty much the most important rulers, okay, belonging to your slave or Mamluk dynasty is your Kutubuddin Aibak, Il Tutmush, Razia Sultana, and then your Balban, right? After Balban, again, weak rulers, they couldn't keep up, okay? One more thing, the nobles were getting stronger, right? So what happened after this, right? Arose someone called as Kiljis, okay? The rise of Kiljis, okay? This continues in the same Delhi Sultanate. See, as we have discussed in your slave dynasty or Mamluk dynasty, Right? How Delhi Sultanate was formed or how many dynasties are there in your Delhi Sultanate is five. The first one we have already discussed and the video is down in the description below. Have a look at it. So the second dynasty is your Kilji dynasty. Alright? Let's have a look at Kilji dynasty today. Now, the beginning of Kilji dynasty began with Jalaluddin Kilji. Okay? He was the founder and laid foundation to the Kilji dynasty or the second dynasty of your Delhi Sultanate. Alright. Now, see now during your Balban, who belonged to your slave or Mamluk dynasty itself, we have seen that the nobles tend to get more stronger. So Balban was very much, okay, making sure that the nobles will not overpower your Sultan. Right. So he had to keep them in check. We have also discussed about the concept of the 40 Right? Or to know what the 40 is, I would suggest you to go back to the video on your slave or Mamluk dynasty. Alright? So, amidst that condition, okay, when Jalaluddin took over the throne, he saw that, yes, the nobles are strong. Okay? Uh, one thing is, the nobles are strong is one thing. Second thing, they are constantly rebelling. Okay? They are constantly rebelling against the Sultan. See, already they have rebellions, okay, both outside as well as inside they had to protect. Outside is in the form of your Mongol revolts, okay. Inside is with respect to your nobles, right. Your Jalaluddin Kilji took a more of a policy of toleration in dealing with these nobles, okay. He thought that, okay, it is not just harshly, I will keep on criticizing, punishing, Okay, and then I will make sure they will be always under my control. But, but it is not possible to always be cautious around constantly putting nobles. So instead he tried to win over them. Okay, so if we see something with respect to Jalaluddin Kilji, it is policy of toleration. Understanding it is a policy of toleration. Alright, next is your Jalaluddin Kilji. Now, again, as we have discussed, to win the goodwill of the nobility, he followed policy of tolerance. And also, he married his daughter to Ulu Khan, who was a descendant of a Chinggis Khan. Again, remember, Mongols, we have discussed here. Right? Mongols, nobles. These two were posing as a major threat to the dynasty. Any dynasty for that matter, not just your Kiljis. But also with respect to your slave or upcoming uh, dynasties which will come in your Delhi Sultanate. These two are the major challenges they have to deal with. Each particular ruler adopted a different approach. That of your Jalaluddin Kilji was of tolerance towards both your external invasion as well as internal invasion. Okay. Now, Devgiri was invaded by your Alauddin Kilji. Now we have been discussing about your Jalaluddin Kilji, right? He is pretty much having a policy of tolerance, not just with respect to administration, but also towards the people. Okay, he is considered a little bit more liberal compared to other rulers we have seen in Delhi Sultanate and all. Now, makes the entry of a new person in the Kilji dynasty. That is your Alauddin Kilji, who is a nephew of Jalaluddin Kilji as well as the son-in-law. He was both the nephew as well as son-in-law of Jalaluddin Kilji. Now, your Alauddin Kilji treacherously murdered his own father-in-law and crowned himself as the Sultan. Okay. See, now in recent times you would have seen a movie called Padmavat. Right. 
something about your rani padmi and then your alauddin khilji yeah this is the guy they are talking about all right next see initially all right this was the extent of your khiljis but with the undertaking of alauddin khilji he okay orders a downward or southward expansion or deccan entry okay that is he orders for okay again we will see about in further upcoming video about your malik kafur and all but basically he orders for southward expansion all right so with respect to alauddin khilji he was his father in law jalaluddin khilji if he was a man of tolerance alauddin khilji was not a very tolerant person tolerance is not the word you would use for alauddin khilji okay see he had two things if at all he felt the opposition or the enemy is stronger than him he would somehow try to defeat them in any ways because he was who was it Alauddin Khilji was okay insecure about that, or he will try to take over all the neighboring places either in the name of loot or territory. Okay, either of the two, but he needed to amass those riches. All right. See, initially he was appointed as the minister of ceremonies and minister. Of, uh, initially he was appointed as uh, minister of war and minister of ceremonies. okay and also with respect to nobles okay the policy that his father in law or the first ruler of your khilji dynasty that is your jalaluddin khilji took was that of tolerance try to win over the nobles whereas this guy alauddin khilji was always suspicious of them okay and in the empire there was something called as your new musalmans old balbani all right old balbani nobles were dating back to asli or mamluk dynasty and your old jalali nobles he got them executed if he has if someone has to be there in the form of nobles it has to be someone who is on the side of your alauddin khilji so much so he was doubtful always about people that his own family members he has got them murdered eyes gouged out okay and also he was the one who also made sure that non turks were also appointed into the administration okay this brought in the turkish nobility ka hatred all right and he saw that with respect to nobility when he observed he assessed that the nobles are generally very prosperous and also one more thing they did was the nobles were mixing with the nobles that is they were marrying among the nobles okay one more thing was when the nobles are getting together coming together be it for marriage or any other occasion right he would be left blind sided that is there was no spy system that was there to report back to the king as to what is happening there right and also drinking liquor he thought drinking liquor intoxicants they constantly keep plotting against the sultan himself this is what he observed and to curb this he brought about four ordinances what are those ordinances he found that the nobles are generally wealthy so he confiscated their wealth second thing the intelligence system was reorganized meaning that the spy system was made effective all right the usage of okay intoxicants liquor etc were banned alongside that even gambling was banned right now if any social gathering has to take place okay it has to be with the permission of the sultan just to know that the sultan would be aware of what's happening in the territory all right next with respect to organization your alauddin khilji established a very huge okay and most important keyword permanent standing army okay in the administrative part of your khiljis we will discuss how exactly the army was further organized but the army was very well organized and that of a permanent in nature now if you look at his military conquests okay it starts with gujarat all right this was the first territorial conquest and also uh, this was carried out by his two most trusted generals that is ulu khan and nusrat khan okay and this is the time where we see the somna temple destruction and everything and this is where we also mark the entry of malik kafur he is also a 
slave that has got into your Alauddin Kilji. All right. Now, as we have discussed about your Malik Afur, now he raises in a higher position. So much so that to an extent he raises to a position of naib, somewhere like a prime minister. Now, something that is just to indicate that that he gained or he rose over who Malik Afur rose over to very important and prominent positions. Now look at this after Gujarat. Okay, Alauddin Said fell on Rajputana. Ratambor was captured. Okay, and your Muhammad Jaisi has written a poem on this. Okay, this is where we speak about your Padmavat movie and all that we've discussed. Their parts of it is from here. Okay, later Chittor was renamed as Khizrabad. Basically, nothing but name of Alauddin's son. All right. Now. Eventually, during the period of Alauddin Khilji, almost all of the places, see now when almost all of the places, if you are telling, most of these places is either by loot or by territory gain. Okay, either of these two ways, this particular place, for example, when we speak about your Madurai or Pandyas, right, initially what they took over from there was your loot, which meant that, okay, this area was under their control. Okay, this is also the same period of time, okay, where they looted your Kohinoor diamond. Okay, from your Kakatyas. Next. There were four dynasties which were very important in ruling down in the Deccan region. That was Yadavs of Devgiri, Kakatyas of Warangal, Hoysalas of Dwar Samudra and Pandyas of Madurai. Okay, for the southern or Deccan expedition. Okay, your Alauddin Kilji sent Malik Kafur. All right, when Malik Kafur came over with huge amount of loot and presented it to your Alauddin Kilji, Alauddin Kilji was very much impressed. Okay. This one Malik Kafur. Now, again, Hoysala ruler, Pandyas. Okay, see with respect to Pandyas, what happened is when they came to know that yes, the Sultanate is attacking them, the Pandya ruler escaped. So, what did this person do? That is Malik Kafur. He looted the kingdom badly and took away all the riches. Understanding? And also, Alauddin Kelji died in. 1316. So this left a vacuum. By vacuum again, who was going to fill the post? Usually it had to be one of his sons, but rather Malik Kafur ascended the throne. He ascended the throne for very less number of days because he was further killed. Okay, and then your Alauddin Kilji's son, Kutubuddin Mubarak Shah, became the new Sultan. Okay. And he declared himself as the caliph and he cancelled all the harsh regulations that his father Alauddin Kilji had put in place. Okay. And again, this person was murdered by your Kustra. And then he attended the a group of nobles under Ghazi Malik. Okay. Revolted. And then got him killed. And later Ghazi Malik ascended the throne in the name of Giyasuddin Tughlaq. Thus beginning. Your, uh, that's beginning the entry of Tughlaq dynasty in your Delhi Sultanate. Alright, let's have a brief. The important rulers here are Jalaluddin Kilji, Alauddin Kilji and Tughdin Mubarak Shah. Alright, now that's it for the content on the political part of your Kiljis. If you do like our content, subscribe to our channel, hit the like button and share it along with your friends. Thank you.